We've been working on continuous delivery, setting up GitHub Actions for an Xcode project. Let's see if we can't finish it up this time. Hey folks, welcome to another edition of the Quality Coding live stream, live coding, all the mistakes, all the time. And welcome Mudshark and Alwold. Good to have you folks. Smaller crews at the start. Uh, we'll see if anyone joins. But you're here, and it's good to have you here. And uh, for those who are watching, hey, El Tigre, welcome. Um, for those who are watching after the fact on YouTube, uh, you, I think you can see that the chat is already fun. Um, it's... We have a lively bunch here. Uh, come on over sometime if you can and join the live stream uh, on Twitch. Uh, but meanwhile, hey, if you like what you see, give it a like and all that. Hope you folks are well. Let's see. Do, do, do. Uh, hey, Rick. Good evening to you. Good to have you. A um, uh, quick uh, commercial. Um, you go to Industrial Logic. First, if, you have, if you've never gone and checked out the content uh, of industriallogic.com, there's some cool stuff here worth checking out. Uh, but what I wanted to show you, not the company, public workshops. And hey, hey, to good workshops uh, coming up this year, including one by me. So check those out. Let's get into the meat of the matter. By the way, since uh, we're working on an app, um, but after I uh, did some pairing with Craig Clayton, and I posted those, uh, well, the first session we didn't record, but I posted the last videos of our last session up on YouTube. Um, hey, Dan, uh, it was really interesting and enlightening for me to work with somebody who's really good at swift ui uh, and to see how how craig approaches coding is very very different from what i'm used to that made me rethink what we are doing here for our project and we had a little poll last time and it came out pretty even um yeah, actually, it came out in favor of continuing with Git out uh, rather than Mastermind. But on app, where was it? Um, on YouTube, I think, actually. Um, a few folks chimed in and said, yeah, I really, really want to see Swift UI. And I feel that eagerness too. And after pairing with Craig, I thought, I need to, I would like to work on an app that is UI centric, where we start from the UI and kind of work backwards rather than starting from a model and working forwards. So I am going to take the liberty of reparenting this and maybe we'll come back to this idea another time. But this... Now, there are a few project things I have to do. I have to set up a new um, uh, certificate and so forth and all that. So I'm trying to work on that on the side. You don't want to watch me do all this again. It's way faster. Thanks to your help. Uh, as I've figured it out live and, and you folks helping me, suggesting things, um, catching my mistakes, 
I'm like, wow, it's so much faster uh, the second time around and following the discovery tree to do so. So I'm I basically I've come this far uh, with Mastermind um, and I'm starting on the CD part. And uh, starting to, you know, put it into blog form. All right, a few more folks have joined. Welcome. Say hello in the chat if you haven't already. And so with that in mind, it doesn't really matter because it's, they're both uh, at this point, hello world apps. Uh, project setup, we've done CI, so to speak. We've done a build system. Uh, we've done, we're working on CD. We've made progress automating test flight. And there are a few things um, we want to sweep up and get working the whole way through. Uh, one thing we wanted to do, and see, I wouldn't have remembered this. Uh, I, I really love discovery trees. It's, it's nicer than a to-do list for me um, because it's two-dimensional. I suppose a three-dimensional discovery tree would be just nuts. <laughs> hey, somebody want to build one? Um, we want to log the commit hash used for the build. Now, somebody said we could do that without issuing a bunch of git commands. We could probably just get it from a GitHub variable. A GitHub Actions variable. So let's see if we can't start there. Let's see. GitHub Actions variables. Hey, Ignacy Perez. Welcome. Uh, variables. Commit hash. Let's see what we have. We've got GitHub provides two variables. Okay, let's try it and see. Basically, I think I just want to echo this. Here we go. Boop, boop, boom. Oh, that's not, not the build. We're working on deploy. That's better. All right. Uh, Let's do it right after the action, the checkout action. Um, Um, I, this will work, but I want to put an identifier on it. So maybe I do want that name after all. Let's call this, uh, <laughs> you uh, did you see the old Objective C programmer in me coming out, where I wanted to line up the colons? <laughs> All right, let's try that and see if that 
works and it doesn't have to run the whole thing i just want to start it Here we go. Let me do a pull it just in case. Whoops. Whoops, whoops, whoops. What's happened? <laughs> Bonk. Live coding, ladies and gentlemen. Um, okay, that looks right. I... Here's origin main. Why couldn't it pull? Not that I need to. Okay, I'm going to push. What the heck is wrong with pull? Okay. I have no idea. Did I mess something up while I was making the mastermind thing? But that was a copy of this uh, folder. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. All right, we should be able to see very quickly. Uh, not the build, you dork. We don't have deploy triggered yet, and that's okay. That's on our list. Here we go. Forgot that we had to do a manual. Trigger. And let's check the SHA. Okay, this can cancel. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't care anymore. The SHA is EBFD. Let's compare that. EBFD. All right. That's a win. That just, we want the, the thing, the reason uh, I wanted this is that, uh, something we put into a bunch of the other, uh, places where we've done this is more logging. Basically when you're working with a remote system, the logging is Really nice. Is that right, Al? You're probably right. Let's have a look. So, yeah, it'll probably say in here somewhere. Yeah, there it is. I, you're right. I, I do like it better without having to... Um, dig through these this again we're designing for people <laughs> trying to make this good for humans so thanks thanks for pointing that out though that's good hello first time chatter omar hegazi welcome uh where in the world are you i'm in california in the united states uh of america the country where people have no name. Uh, we're not Americans. We're Usanians. But glad to have you. Egypt. Oh, Mudshark, Mudshark figures out like where I'm leaning with this. Okay, roll call. Countries, go. Everyone. <laughs> Rick in the UK. He's already put that in there. Um, uh, who else? Where are you from? Yeah. 
U.S. of Arizona. <laughs> this is... Isn't this amazing? It would be better if we were actually coding together, but this is pretty good. Some, sometimes I step back and I look at things and go, wow, I remember when, like, I remember when the cool thing was bulletin board systems. Oh, I'm an old person. I'm dating myself. Y'all have never even heard of a bulletin board, BBS. Um, except for Mud Shark. <laughs> I'm just guessing. Anyway. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, all right. This is done. So we mark it green. Now, a couple more things. Um, I'm going to pull this out. This is a question. We do want deployment, but I also want um, this. The encryption. Remember, when you make a uh, push up to test flight, <laughs> 96, yeah, 9600 was fast. Man, those, those were the fast modems. Okay. Uh... <laughs> All right, y'all are older than I thought. <laughs> fun um when we when our system pushes up to test flight and this also happened manually we come through to this challenge saying whoa what about the encryption like are you do you promise to solemnly swear um uh, that you are not nefariously uh, breaking things and there's a way to turn this off and that is through a plist setting i'm gonna go over here different project because inside this info that there it is its app uses non-exempt encryption false so this is what we want Question is, how do we do this these days? The info plist is kind of hidden. Info. Um, do we just add it in here? Let's just try it. Uh, oh, here it is. App uses non-exempt encryption. 4,800 baud. You have one? C64. Ah, uh, trip down memory lane. You know what I have up in the attic that I, I want to get down one of these days, but I know that it's going to take some work to get it working again, and that is my Amiga. All right. Uh, it looks like it may be this easy. App uses non-exempt encryption. No. I'm just going to mark that in um, here. So it's not exactly in the P list anymore. It's in info. It's still in a P list, but it's done sort of for us. And this is app uses non-exempt encryption. Just a note to myself um, so that I can write this stuff up. All right, let's try it. Oh, it made an info that p list look at that it probably doesn't show us in here okay all right so the rest of this is somewhere in there but i'm curious now let's take a look at the info p list
I expect it'll look much like what we saw with the other one. Okay. That's fine. Also, I want to, I'm curious, what does it look like in the project file? Oh, I wanted to see info plist file. So Xcode doesn't instantiate most of the plist scheme, test plan, etc. files until you make a change. Wow, when I was a kid, our info plists had everything in them. Maybe, maybe not. Of course, when I was a kid, I was using, there was no Xcode. All right, so it, it sets an info plist file setting and then does that in case you want to move it anywhere on your own. Though I don't know why you, the, the reason I used to uh, is when I w would have multiple um, plists for different purposes um, because a plist is just XML. It was a handy place to keep some stuff. All right, so let's commit that. This is an environment change. And do, do, do. actually, that there. Let's try it. Push it up, up it goes. Come back to our deploy. Trigger it. So, uh, what we will, what we are hoping to see is a new build where it doesn't have the warning sign and we have to manage it in order to get it through. Just want it to go through automatically. Hey, hello, more folks who have joined. Welcome and say hello in the chat if you, uh, uh, if, even if it's something just hello, that's fine. Uh, if, if you have a random question unrelated to this, uh, that's fine. It's, I'll use my discretion about how much time to spend um, or something to share. Uh, you won't be able to post links unless you've been here before and I've blessed you. That's just me protecting the chat list. So, um, this deploy should be going. Let's see. Let's look at how it's, it's proceeding. Oh, it is working on the deploy app to Apple phase. That's good. Interesting thing, uh, is that if we go to the actions and look at uh, this, this is the build. I should really rename some of the steps in, in the other one. But this is the uh, build and run tests. It's still going. And the deploy is already uploading to Apple. What's the deal? And the deal is that first time run of uh, tests is so painful. It is. I really hope Apple improves that. It would save everybody. It would save everybody if they could get the first time test run to fly through instead of just sit there and crunch. 
Okay, the deploy has succeeded. Ah, so. El Tigre. Interesting question. About my glasses. Funny thing has happened as I've gotten older. Um, for a while there, I was using many different pairs of glasses. Um, I had uh, uh, what you saw me with uh, here in my, in my office setup was I was using computer glasses. And that was um, to give me this length of uh, focus for most of my vision, except for the very, very top, I could peek up or I could tilt my head down sort of a cheating. It's sort of like a opposite bifocal uh, to see at a, a greater distance. Norm. Okay. Old person here. Uh, normal bifocals, even if you can't see them, like they're hidden on, on my glasses, they have the reading down at the bottom. So you can look down with your eyes and, and read something and see at a distance. Computer glasses are nice because they, they're like sort of the opposite. But I started to feel weird and like things were out of focus. Um, and I went to my optometrist and uh, she took a look at me and said, don't think you need them anymore. Seems the reshaping of my old eyes has actually improved my vision. So I wear glasses very little these days. It's weird as, as heck. Totally, totally weird. <laughs> keep your, uh, keep your... Elon Musk implants away from me. Okay, look, an invite has gone out. I probably have an email saying there's a new thing. Let me, let me check. Hey, I have email from App Store Connect and from Test Flight. saying it's up this is a win that was easy so yay i'm going to mark this as done and this isn't really a step this is a note do i have a color for notes i don't really have a color for notes i'm going to use blue Again, a nice thing about um, a virtual discovery tree is you can very quickly decide, yeah, it's not like Jira, right? Where you have to set up friggin' rules and so forth. It's just colors and shapes. Um, <laughs> it's a trivial win, Michaela. Welcome. Um, where we just, uh, set the, uh, the thing in info P list to say, we don't use uh, special encryption to see that it already, it, to see that our build gets all the way through. And then I got an email. So that's the big win there. Um, so with a, di a discovery tree, oh, you don't, okay. There you go. <laughs> All right. See, that was worth coming, even if you leave right away. Um, uh, cool. By the way, thank you for coming. It's always nice to have you. Um, all right. Here we are. So the deploy right now is manual. Let's work on this. Let's talk about it for a second. No, let's work on it right away. What I don't know how to do, because I don't think I've done it this way, is to set up 
a workflow that depends on another. Oh my gosh, is this still going? Is that real? No, it's not. Okay. <laughs> but it took five minutes. This is interesting. Look, it takes about six minutes for it to get through the tests, even though running the tests takes this long. That long. Yeah. Refresh is my friend. Um, but because uh, until Apple decides to fix um, things or improve things, they already did improve it, so it must have been really bad. Um, it takes a long time when there's a simulator involved. Uh, that is a point, <laughs> Michaela, that um, GitHub and any uh, build farm, server farm, will be using Mac minis, and they'll have thousands of them, or hundreds of them, uh, and they'll have they'll all be old and they'll all be cheap, uh, and you can with if you pay f like if you have github um teams or github enterprise you can pay more money to say i want um do, 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 do. instead of mac os 13 i want mac os 13 larger and where larger means like it's got maybe it's it's actually an arm uh let's take a look at that GitHub Actions Runners. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, I want the list. Where's the list? Uh, duh, 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 duh. I was just doing this last night in my write-up. Oh, I can go to my write-up. Here, you get a, maybe a quick peek at my blog post. So, uh, there's macOS 13. There's macOS 13 large. And look at... and x large and that's arm 64 so you're right we are running on pokey intel machines <laughs> and this would be a, a reason to think about getting off the cloud there's there are prices there are ways i think you can set up your own runner to say look for this Talk to talk to this machine. We're not going to do that here, obviously. But that is uh, curious. All right. So what we wanted to do, I got distracted there, but this is fun. Um, can we fire the deploy? Can we make it so that deploy is holding back and gets triggered if the build succeeds? Hmm? And I don't think I've ever done that. GitHub Actions trigger uh, an another workflow? Let's see. How to trigger a workflow from another workflow? I'm looking for in the workflow. If workflow run trigger. Okay, I don't know what that is, so let's go back. Exactly. It...
it's the price of running on someone's cheap ass <laughs> max you know what is stunning to me uh is if if you let me show you something i've got a another project i've got a thing i haven't announced um called expect to eventually equal it's a handy little test helper and uh it has no xcode project it is just a swift package but because i could get it working on linux i could use A non, yeah, for async stuff, uh, uh, I could use a, not a Mac and run my tests and look at this, 28 freaking seconds, 34 seconds to run, uh, 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 to tell, well, you want to see it? <laughs> To run Swift test. There's very on, on on Ubuntu. It's just frighteningly fast. So if you have a Swift package, get off of and and you your your you can support Linux. Get off of Max. <laughs> All right. But where are we? We're trying to get here. Trigger workflow. Trigger and workflow from another workflow. That's a lot of words. Show me an example. Following the workflow uses a personal access token to add a label. Oh, that's run gh yeah check it out it is just i was stunned it's <laughs> yeah Quick aside, uh, I was uh, called for jury duty this past week, and um, while I was sitting in the uh, jury assembly room waiting, which is most of what you do uh, until they choose the jury, um, and I wasn't chosen, but it took a few, couple days, uh, I thought, well, I'll upload that video of me working uh, coding with Craig Clayton up to youtube and you know hit upload start to fill out the stuff um and then say okay and uh let's not make it public yet until i get craig's okay and then it said it was it was done it was processing i'm like what turns out the jury uh the courthouse has um uh fiber <laughs> It was so fast. Uh, anyway, sorry about that. Um, huh? When you use... There's got to be a simple example. Please. Okay, after the first workflow completed, another workflow starts automatically. That's what we want. Workflow 1 runs every three hours. 
After workflow one is completed, workflow two automatically starts. Okay, so workflow one is on a cron job schedule. That's the trigger. And workflow two. Oh, here we go. That looks like it. Thank you, uh, Irfan Karaman, for making something that was easy to digest. Here I live in freaking Silicon Valley, and um, my relatives who live in Nowheresville in Nepal um, have fiber, and I don't. Now, granted, their fiber literally runs over the street. Like, <laughs> still, they have fiber. All right, let's try this. So this is workflow. Du, 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 du. Let's make the indentation somewhat consistent. I learned that YAML actually Even the indentation matters, but apparently YAML itself is loose in how it interprets it. So it doesn't have to be consistent, which of course would be horrible. <laughs> uh, and so let's see, instead of workflow one, and what is the name? The name has to match that ID. So here we go. Do, 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 do. Take the build. Okay, so it's built. Let's do that. And this, it turns out, is just an identifier. Or is that the identifier? Name seems unusual. But maybe that'll work. But this is an identifier. I'm going to rename this to deploy. I'm taking two steps. Normally when I'm working locally, I take one step and I test it, unless I'm feeling really bold. When working with something where the feedback system is slower, you take bigger steps. And that's why it's so important to get fast feedback as fast as you possibly can. And that's why we spent time working on setting up the project to get tests, the tests themselves as fast as freaking possible. At least there may be ways to make it faster as we go. Uh, is completed trigger for both success and failure? Only success. Worth checking. Okay. So, you know, what does completed mean? That's the question. Thank you for, for that caution. Let's go. Do, do, do. Uh, what do you call it? Types workflow on workflow run types. Mm, I'll just take a stab at it. Workflow run. What is types? T 
types, 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 created, edited, come on. I don't know. So let's let's make let's try it. Let's confirm. Uh, and to do that, let's see it succeed first, and then I'll try to break it. How about that? Caution is a good friend. So here we just did that and changed the name of the identifier because it was confusing me. Why was I seeing build in the deploy step? All right, so this is, we are attempting uh, tr trigger Build complete triggers I wanted to start with a verb in case um, we revert it makes the message clear here we go so now this so we have done I've been successful with doing this manually. Question is, will this now successfully fire through? And for this, here's the bummer. We're going to have to wait around for five minutes. Should have saved the tails. All right, we'll tell more tales. <laughs> we will tell more tales um, in the five minutes that we have. And let me also explain what else I'm thinking about. And I may or may not do this uh, in the live stream because I see that we're getting close to the end. Um, the App Store plist is uh, was a separate plist containing like what what provisioning to use. And I realized, wait, when you're building locally, like. I think I, I set it up wrong. Right? Here. I have set it up to use distribution, a distribution profile for my local builds. That don't seem right. And I think I did that in order to get the script working locally, and that seems like overkill. Instead, this should be automatic so that it's like, whatever uh whatever team member has it and they do you do not want them to have the distribution uh profile uh you yeah. know that should be generally limited to just a few people uh so that's why we have a separate app p list so i wanted to see if things will work if i set this back but that's that. Let's go have a look at all workflows and tell tales of old programming or new programming. Uh, I will say that I have had a talk accepted and a workshop accepted at a conference. I'm excited. Here we go from El Tigre. Let's see what we got. Uh-oh. Oh, shoot. 
<laughs> okay. Yeah, it seems pretty clear that that uh, we have to check the conclusion flag. What a pain! So uh, it it hasn't been announced yet uh, who the speakers are. So I kind of want to hold back. Um, to not steal their thunder. Basically, let them have their, the PR moment. Because it's not about me. But I'm excited. Alright, so this may be more work. Mm, bring this up here. Thank you for that. Uh, so, that's sort of another step. There we go. Aren't discovery trees great? Um, again, I, I said this before, Jira is a pain in the butt. Uh, Jira is, is sort of focused on limiting what you can do. There's nothing we can't do here. I can draw a picture here. I can paste screenshots here. Um... How does this work in a, in a larger communication? Well, we could, as I mentioned uh, some, some, some time ago, if need be, we could put um, a ticket number in here just to tie it back to Jira. So people can say, oh, okay, once this goes green, I'll set that to done. But all the details would be in here. All right, how are we doing for minutes? Hey, okay, so good. We got we we're we're one step of the way there. Um, all right, so let's start on this. In fact, I don't even want it to continue at this point. I don't need it to actually deploy. Oh, but I do want to see there. It says deploy now. That's better. Okay, so four and a half minutes, and then it triggered. Let's try to do this. This would be a good finish. It, it seems important not to deploy something, <laughs> not to even attempt to build uh, an archive if the tests are failing. If you want to run a job or step based on the result of the triggering workflow, you can use a conditional with the Blah prop conclusion property. Okay, so this is on. All right. So here we have, looks like I don't need to put it in quotes, but it's working with quotes. Uh, types completed. The, the reason for uh, this array syntax is so that you could, it's easy to change to say, oh, I want a different type. 
but in this case, I don't know that it matters. Eh. Do it. It's a little tighter. Okay, jobs. On success. So basically, we have two different jobs, it looks like. That's how I'm reading this. There's an on-success job and an on-failure job. The name doesn't matter, but it's not a bad name. Let me just copy and paste this. Yeah, exactly. Uh, thank you for that. So, on success, I think I'm going to put on failure first. And if it fails, then we can echo this right away using Ubuntu. And that, as you've seen, will be fast. On success runs on if. There we go. I'm going to call, let's call it on success. There. All right. Uh, let me commit this. Uh, trigger deploy on successful build only. And let's introduce a failure. The quickest way to introduce a failure would be to introduce a syntax error because I just don't want to run tests. So, here we go. What is this? This is a breaking build. So it is in a way, it's an environment change. I'm going to use a format I have never used before to say this is an environment change and it is broken. Introduce syntax error to test. Uh, OK. Here we go, push. Ba -da -ba -dum. Let's see what happens. Did I not add the condition in there? Oh, shoot. Maybe it's okay. What was it? No, it's okay. The if and the steps below it, I think it, it's okay. Well, let's find out. That's why we're here. All right. Successful failure.
and a deploy that is green showing on failure. I wish there were a way to say don't mark it green. But it's working, and that's good. Um, is there a way to get the GitHub action to fail? To mark it saying it failed, sucker. Workflow failure. Run exit one. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Exit, if you're not familiar, in in um basically in in Unix world, exit zero is success, and exit non-zero is failure. So that, I think this is the syntax for a multi-step run. Let's try that. Um, on On build failure, mark deploy as failure. Also, something like that. Here we go. This is interesting and cool and would never have happened without pooling our brains together. And that is why I will doubt I will ever work for a place that forces me to work alone. Again, I think I would just say no. Siloed, siloed work. Go off into your cave and code this. Now, some people like working in caves. It's not effective. It's just not effective. And I can understand, like, if from a social preference or neurodivergent preference that you want to, if you want to go off and work by yourself, um, sorry, it's not, th we, the team has to come first. Uh, me? You're looking at it. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> Truth. All right, let's see how this goes. Okay, there's the failure, and this should fail fairly quickly. Oh, it did. So there we go. Okay, now let's um, do, 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 let me revert this. Here we da da da. All right. I don't know if you want to stick around for five minutes. Um, or not. Because we've already seen it succeed. I am going to watch this. But I think it might not be a great use of your time at this point. We've already demonstrated that we have... Well, it's a little different. Because here there was just, oh wait, no, that one, see, ah, there's a reason we did that one.
Hey. This is looking promising. All right. Well, if you got to go, I understand. I think I'll stay on just to see it through to the finish. <laughs> um, uh, I should say my normal closing spiel at this point. Hey, we're done with the stream. Back to full face. Um, uh, and hello. And uh, uh, oh, well, that's my that's my book. Um, hey, if Mastodon, follow me on Mastodon. <laughs> Uh, if you're, if, if you can get off of Twitter, if do so, even if it's a little painful, I left behind something like 7,500 followers on Twitter and it's been so nice to have an experience that is not only Elon free, it's ad free. It is ad free. Uh, how does it still work? How, how does anyone run it? By donations. Um, my website, YouTube, uh, Twitch is here. That's me on LinkedIn. And that is the company through which I consult now. And yes, do check out iOS Dev Space. That's a good one. Um, iOS Dev Happy Hour is is on Mastodon, which I thank uh, Michaela or whoever set that up. And um, yeah, uh, do, 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 do. if you've watched this on YouTube, I mean, you've gotten this far, uh, you may as well train the system and tell the system so that, hey, you liked it. If you really liked it, you could subscribe. If you really, really, really like it, you could join on Twitch. If you really, 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 really like it, you could subscribe on Twitch. All right. I think that's where I'm going to call it technically. Haha. <laughs> Back here, we got three minutes. Three minutes to go. What's my plan going forward? Uh, I think I will try to tackle this on my own, unless it's interesting. Basically, set that set that back and see if it works. And the my effort to set up a script may have been misguided, and I want to discover that. But let's say that all this is working. Then uh, what's the plan for next week will be, let's try it all again using Xcode Cloud and see, I expect it will be a lot easier. I hope. Uh, but we may be able to reuse some things. That's the plan going forward. Come on here, four minutes. Average right now is six minutes. And uh, if, you know, I have zero experience using Xcode Cloud. So for me, it'll, it would be like a completely brand new experience. And if you have any Xcode Cloud experience, your contributions will matter a lot. It will be very helpful. Remember what we said. Individual, what Grant said, individual humans are cognitively extremely limited, but in social groupings, we can achieve quite a lot. Stand up to fascists, kids. Think of, think of Loki, who said, uh, and, and that, uh, in that, uh, the man who wouldn't bow down to him. Yeah. There are always people like you. Remember him. Okay, here we go. Uh, the build succeeded. 
Deploy is flying. On success is running. I'm going to call this a, 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 I'm going to call it, this is good. Thank you, folks. Thank you for joining. Thanks for your help. Uh, very exciting. Uh, this took several sessions, you know, if an hour and a bit a piece, mostly an hour. Um, it probably would have been a full day's work. Worth it. Worth it. All right. So I'll see you next week. Um, for those who uh, um, uh, celebrate uh, uh, Happy Superb Owl uh, Day for American football. And that's, uh, that's it. Take care. This was a lot of fun. Thank you. Thanks for coming, Omar. Take care.